I'm Serge, uh, co-founder of Blocks. I also have with me here today Omar, who is our lead industrial design, and Advet, who leads the marketing side. Uh, really excited to be here today. Actually, I'm really excited to have seen Bleep Bleeps. Um, I've heard about them about a year ago, I think, and I was like, wow, these guys really can do design. This is something that we aspire to be, like something really cool, but in a slightly different setting. <laughs> so anyway, who, who we are. So Blocks aspires to be the world's first fully customizable smartwatch. So what does that actually mean? Blocks is just like Lego. You can take a single block, which can be a sensor uh, such as GPS, um, a heart rate, an extra battery, or whatever you want it to be, a contactless payment card, and you snap it together to make a device which is unique to your needs and to your lifestyle. So why is this relevant? You know, there are people out there who really love their sports, and when they do get into the sport, sometimes they start running um, just as a, as a beginner, and as they progress in their sports, what they could do with blocks is they can upgrade their features as they go along. So for example, they can snap on um, a heart rate monitor with a GPS sensor and make a watch which is relevant to their training and upgrade it as it goes along. However, when they do decide to take a trip out um, into, into the wild, they, they transform their watch into something completely different. So Blocks really lives on with you with whatever your hobbies are. You can snap on an altitude uh, you know, and pressure sensor and maybe a few extra batteries to really make your watch um, last much longer. But in fact, Blocks can be anything that you really want. What we are building, we're building not just a smartwatch, we're building a, an open platform for wearables. So a single block can be developed by any company in the future or any individual and, and sold on the block store. That way, we really will have an ability to, to take any sensor that you have uh, ever heard of in a wearable device and put it on the blocks platform. So we've had an exciting journey so far. We've been um, developing this over the last one and a half years. We, so far, we've amassed 23,000 people on our platform with whom we constantly engage. We have about 12,000 uh, so followers on social media. But most importantly, we haven't launched a crowdfunding platform yet. But what we've tried to do, we really try to be lean in the way we do things. We really try to see how can we prove to the investors, how can we prove to ourselves that there is something there so complicated, but something that people really are passionate about. So what we did is we did a 1,000 limited memberships thing. Basically, we offered someone who, who wanted to buy it, a $50 depo for a $50 deposit, they would get the right to buy it first on crowdfunding. And we've sold out in just um, under 48 hours or so. So we got this money in the bank account without ever showing any kind of prototype, ever telling people who we are, what do we do, how much funding we have. And this is really what I think Lean Hardware is about. It's about trying to really get traction even maybe before you go to Indiegogo. So far, we've had a quiet journey. We've actually uh, managed um, to get um, some, some of the world's best partners that we could ever wish for to work with us. So the prototype that you've just seen the GIF of uh, is actually hosts a Qualcomm uh, Snapdragon 400 processor, which is used in many other smartwatches, such as Sony, uh, Samsung, and LG today. Uh, we've also secured a deal with Compile, who's the second biggest manufacturer in the world of laptops and smartphones. And we've worked with a number of different people who I think we all uh, know very well uh, who helped us through this kind of journey. And one of them, Dragon Innovation, has been indis indispensable. As well as Hardware Track. If you are in Taiwan, these guys really can connect you to different companies. So this is our journey. Uh, we've started uh, a little bit earlier than March last year, but this is our first prototype. Really clunky thing. Just looks like something from a, like a sci-fi film. We've, uh, we've been lucky enough to get into the finals of the Intel's Make It Wearable channel, uh, challenge last year, where Intel actually provided us with a new design, uh, new, um, new so system on the chip that we've utilized to kind of decrease our prototype in size. And then we've kind of brought it down to, to the final form factor, as you can see here. Um, so Blocks will run on a full stock Android operating system. The reason why it's important is because we won't provide functionality um, for anything that you like your block or your modules to do. So it can be even pr uh, provide things such as seller connection, so it can be completely standalone, or do contactless payments. And this is something that, you know, for example, Android Wear doesn't support today. And the choice of Android itself really gives us the scale to, to do a platform which anybody can plug into. 
Uh, and this is the block itself. So actually, we've uh, we've we've done majority of our work was on how do we make this system smart? How do we optimize for all the battery uh, stuff that's happening? How do we how do you make it last really long? So each one of our blocks is a smart device in itself. It has a, mi a tiny microcontroller, so that's able to control what we actually read from from each sensor, and uh, that in itself saves a lot of battery. In addition to the extra battery, they can just snap on at any time that you want. And this is how it looks like uh, in the hands. And actually, we've, uh, if you come up to me or Omar, we'll show you some of the, uh, from the products ourselves. J as James pointed out, it's all about the team. Uh, I think the only reason we're here today is because we have an amazing team. Um, half of these guys are PhD students or graduated as a PhD from Imperial College um, in electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, um, computer science, um, and so on. Uh, or the undergrads, which is brilliant, they're like even better than us, uh, do PhDs. And we also have some designers from Central, um, Central St. Martins, which is just great. They really come and they tell us, no, you're doing it wrong, you're being too logical about it. You really have to think about the end user. And just because of these people, we're, we've managed to kind of go through this journey. That's it, thank you.